So I am pleased to introduce Ginny Serio. She will be presenting her talk on loving life being healthy. She's from Syracuse, New York. She's a certified practitioner of holistic health, the emotion code, hypnosis, and past life regression. She's a Reiki master and works with other energy modalities. <clears throat> she is also the vice president of the Finger Lakes Dowser, member of the ASD, and has been dowsing for 12 years and owned a florist shop for 35 years, which I just learned this past week when I found out there's no way you're going to call her two, week, two days before Mother's Day because she's swamped. But thankfully, she got unswamped, and now she's here to speak with us. So, Ginny, you can unmute yourself, and you are on. Ginny, it's all you. Okay, Suzanne's taking care of this. Yep, you're on. <clears throat> okay. You weren't muted before. You should be hearing me now. No, it said I wasn't muted. I'm unmuted, you. You're fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It's nice to have you join us tonight. And you know, tonight's topic is going to be a lot about health and nutrition, something that's extremely important in everyone's life. And right now, with everything that's going on, it is definitely something we need to be really conscious of that's going on in our life. So one of the things I want to start out with is so that people are aware that our ailments, our imbalances, they're caused from negative emotions, from traumas and different actions that have happened in life. And what happens is the energy blocks on main organs. And the main organs are on Chinese meridians. And so when you have a problem, say in, you know, an ankle or a knee, you would check the meridian charts to see what main organ does that meridian go to where you have the problem. Because it's not really just your knee. Your knee is out of balance because the organ that controls it is not functioning properly. So really to get that back in balance, you need to look at the organ and bring that back up. And there are some different pendulums too I want to cover tonight with you. And they're of very importance for what's going on um, and keeping us healthy. Now, right now, with the viruses that are going on, there is a pendulum called Orsiris. And are you able to see this? Let's see. I can move that so that you'll be able to. And Osiris has four like half spheres to it. It also comes apart, and it needs to be when you're not using it, you can take it apart. Don't, you know, you don't have to take each ring out, but at least have it in two pieces because it has negative green and you do not want negative green energy going um, all the time. So with this particular pendulum, this clears bacteria and it clears viruses. So I use this to check to see um, if anyone has the COVID virus germs from the coronavirus. And that way, if they do, we clear it. And so, you know, I will ask, and then depending on how much is in the person, it will clear it out. And then you can actually go back also and ask the percentage of it if you're interested in finding out how much of that COVID germ is actually in your body. So, you know, somebody might only have 10% or 12%. So you can clear it out distantly, you can clear it out while they're with you. And my question that I would just ask is, you know, can you please clear any of the COVID-19 coronavirus germs? 
And then I also add in anything else that is connected with it. And so it'll start taking out as it's doing with the command. And when that's done, then I also ask about bacteria. I found that a lot of people who have any of the virus, that they also have non-beneficial bacteria. And then I also usually ask if there's any fungus or if there is um, any mold. Do we have that removed? I'll ask if there's any past life, non-beneficial bacteria, any past life viruses, and any other viruses in this lifetime, such as Epstein-Barr and any of the other viruses. So to clear all of that out. And remember, this can be done distantly. So for friends, family members, pets, this is very helpful. Ginny, can you take a moment and explain green energy briefly? Well, the negative green, um, I don't know how to explain it easy for it, but the negative green also works on cancer. So it's on the stronger um, negative energies that are in the body. And that's why you have to do the disconnect with it. So that it's not being expelled all the time. So it's good for killing the things that it needs to, but without overdoing it. Okay, and it comes in different sizes and type here's a wood one. Now the pendulums that I'm showing you are pendulums from Alicia Ayrton. Uh, I actually carry all of her pendulums on that. Okay, and another important thing is about supplements. And for this virus, a very, very important thing that people should all be looking at is oregano, whether it be fresh oregano, oregano capsules that have dried oregano in it, or oregano oil, or essential oil of oregano. Oregano will kill bacteria and it will kill viruses. It's actually known to be stronger than some medical items on out there. And that would always be doubts what the amount is that you need. And for today, for tomorrow, you know, how many times a day. Now, another really important one for this virus is zinc. And if you've been hearing anything about it where it says, you know, people are losing their smell and they're losing their taste. That's because they are very low on zinc or they're out of zinc. That is one of the main things that zinc um, is for, our senses and our, our smell. All right, now this particular witness chamber Everybody can see this little chamber here, right? It's clear inside and it holds, you know, a capsule very nicely and that's a capsule of zinc. So if you've got somebody that you've checked in there low on zinc, you just can go ahead and put the zinc remedy in there, the vitamin D, any of those remedies, and you can distantly or physically do this for a person and just ask, you know, to um, give the person's body all of the zinc that it needs. Please allow the body to accept it. 
Okay, pretty simple on that. Here's a couple other ones that are witnesses. These are important things that we all should have, you know, at least one of to be able to do that. This here, you would put it inside. You can put a capsule in, you can put a tablet in, you can just put a little piece of it. You can put a piece of paper with the name of it on there and put it in there. You can put a drop of essential oil on a little piece of paper and put it in there. So, you know, be creative with whatever your remedy is, and this is the way to put it into their body. Now, here is a brass one. That's the same, and here's a little insert, and you can go through with this. Okay, and it's going to use the same way. You're just going to ask to, you know, put the supplement into the body, and the pendulum is going to move on its own. And usually, what it'll do is it'll go counter. Clockwise, if it's taking something out before it enters in, and then it goes clockwise for when it's putting it into the body, and then it'll stop when it's done. Okay. Another one here. Um, Lever, can you put up the M&M um, directions there? Sure. Let me get them. This pendulum here is called the M&M. And what this is, it's infused with a lot of micro and macro vitamins, minerals. And the chart she's putting up right now that you can see, it tells you that inside this actual pendulum, there is vitamin A, B, complex, C, D, E, K. You can see all the ones that are in there. There's a large amount of it. <laughs> and so you've got somebody who is ill, somebody who's in the hospital, um, these are wonderful for it. You know, I even use this on a daily basis and I will ask, you know, for my body to accept all that it needs or whoever I'm working on. And it is amazing how using a pendulum like this with all the nutrients in it, it can bring somebody into better health. So these pendulums and I feel are really necessary for anybody who's dowsing, whether you're a new dowser or you're an old dowser. But um, for health and that, it really does a lot of work for us. This one here is Isis 16. The thing about Isis 16 is 16 of anything is the frequency of gold. So any people who like to go on to the other side this is um, a great pendulum to do that with. Okay. And one of the other things about 16 is that 16 of anything is the frequency of gold. So if you want your room to have the frequency of gold in it, or your car, or that, having that energy, put 16 of something in it. You can take a piece of paper and put 16 dots on it. You can put 16 grapes in a bowl. Anything that is 16 will create that frequency. And it's good to go ahead and put that on the back of your refrigerators, your stove, washer, dryer, computers, and all of that to get that clearing of it. Okay? So next, I wanna talk about our nutrition. And this is something that Archangel Michael has given me information on. And, you know, what he basically says is, you know, you take a chart and Alita can put that chart up of the zero to 100 and negative 100. And he says that the basics is zero is balanced. So when you are balanced, and right there, you can see where the zero is. Now, if you go to the positive and you are too far over into the positive, like really more than like 20% or so, that can be a problem too of having too much of something. Basically, we're going to work right with the zero to the negative 100. 
And the information that he tells me is that from zero to a negative 33 and a third, which is one third of 100, is when your body will heal itself. So if you walk off a curb and twist your ankle, it's going to heal pretty fast. You fall down, you get a cut, the same thing on it. And so once you start to get out of that range and you get into the negative 33 and a third up to uh, a negative 66 and two, and two thirds, that is where you have to have supplementation. You have to have organic food, get rid of the processed food, exercise, rest, whatever that you can do to be able to bring you out of that area and back up as close as you can to get back to the zero. And that's very important. Now, he tells me when you actually get to that negative 67, when your body is two thirds out of balance, he says that's where cancer comes in and the other major illnesses. So this is a very simple way to kind of wonder about how's, what's going on in my body? How am I getting these things? Remember the emotional creates the physical problem. And if you look at that and you look at your nutrition, then you can understand that, wow, it's really just in three parts. And then I've got to keep that nutrition up towards the beginning. And you can douse this. You know, you can douse on a scale of one to 10. You know, what is the percentage of a certain um, vitamin or mineral in your body? And that gives you the idea when you go through them all as to how far out of balance are you? Is everything out of balance or just a few things? And Alita, there's a chart there with um, a lot of different vitamins and minerals on it. I don't believe I have that chart. Okay, and I had sent it to you probably not too long ago. Okay, let me find it, I'll put it up. Thanks. Is it, there's basically around 90 major vitamins and minerals that we need in our body for our body to function properly. So a lot of people just think we need the main things. We need the magnesium, the vitamin D, um, potassium, and those different ones. And that's not true. We need to have everything that's like a car. All the parts have to be you know, functioning properly in order for it to run properly. And so that's the importance of being able to keep that right in within a third of the nutrition. Let's see if she gets that chart. I actually and didn't receive it, Jenny. Did you email it to me? Yes. At dowsers.org? Mm hmm And it's okay if you don't have it. Yeah, it didn't come through. I'll, I'll keep checking. Okay. In the meantime, just um, since we've... Yep, I'm going right down. Anyway, I just so, want to let everybody know that the, the documents that I've uploaded are the pictures of the pendulums, and then I'm, I'll also upload the dowsing chart. So if you'd like to download those, you're welcome to them. And you'll see that on, um, for those of you who are going to go to convention, and I hope all of you are um, going to be able to join us in convention from your homes. So actually you'll be able to see everything where when we're at convention, we have to make choices. So you can use dowsing charts also for those people who don't want to um, feel comfortable going ahead and dowsing and asking, you know, on a scale of one to 10, 10 equaling 100%, what is the percentage of zinc in my body or so-and-so's body? You can go ahead and make a chart and go ahead and just use the chart 
to find out your negative or positive percentages. And dowsing your supplements. So with the amount of supplements that our body needs, it's something you can go ahead with each supplement and find out again, you know, what is the percentage? So if you're negative 50 on, on something like zinc, you know, being into the 100% is perfect. And basically, if you get at least to that 75%, 70, 75%, then you're in a, a pretty decent range for it. But if you're going to get that you're 40%, a negative 40 on it, then yes, you know you are going to have a problem because you are putting low on what you need to have in there. And another thing I wanted to cover with all of you is about dehydration. And I had a situation a few years back where every time I'd go to douse for a while, I would get that I was not hydrated enough. And even though I drank about a lot of water, I still would be getting it, or if I was okay, I'd be able to douse for a little while again, and then it would say, no, I'm dehydrated. Nobody knew what was the cause of it. You know, I asked a lot of people, and this was going on and on back and forth for close to a year. And it was just getting a little bit worse as it went on and that. So finally, one night after a meeting, when I wasn't able to, you know, douse correctly after drinking four glasses of water, said I still wasn't hydrated. I asked on my way home to Archangel Michael, you know, if he could tell me what it was. And he said, protein. And I said, protein? Okay. So I went to the grocery store on my way home. I bought hamburg. I bought beans, went home and ate it. And sure enough, I could douse. And that was fine. You know, and the next morning I was fine. And then after a while, nope, the same thing started back again. And so I was speaking with somebody that I knew and I explained, you know, I was being told that it was protein. And he told me, he said, ah, it was amino acids. Well, the amino acids are protein. And so when we are working on the other side or, you know, the psychics, um, Use, it takes a lot of energy going up on the other side, and it actually is taking a lot of protein. So it is something that people need to really start checking for. You know, if you're, de you're dehydrated, do you have enough protein in your system? I've added that to my protocol, so I would know that because it is different than water as far as hydration on it. And once again, you can just go ahead and, you know, douse out that percentage from 1 to 10 equaling 100 or using your charts on it. Now, I brought a couple of books here that I found to be very important. And one of them here is um, Life Changes with Food. And this is medical medium, Anthony William. Um, I don't know, I think a lot of people are aware of him now because he's got six books out. But when you find that you are low on different vitamins, minerals, and that, in this particular book, you know, he goes through so many different foods, tells you what the vitamins and minerals is in the book. And so, you know, knowing with the right foods to eat to bring back those supplements into your body. So this is a great book and far worth it for everybody because he really does a lot of information in it. He also has just come out with a new book. Um, well, this isn't it. This is Liver Rescue. But he just came out with also a brand new book on detoxing. And he has all different types of detoxes, which... You know, most of us who are in this the healing field and dowsing and that, we know that a lot of the imbalances are caused from heavy metals, from toxins, um, from lack of nutrition and that. So uh, detoxes are very important and we need to know some good ones to work with and that are safe. Yeah. 
And I also want to just speak about reflexology. All right. If for people who might not be familiar with it or those who are, you know, and the reflexology, this chart here is for hands also, the feet. And also we have the map of our body and our ears and that. But these were wonderful to be able to work on somebody who has a medical issue going on or an imbalance, actually. So, you know, your feet have where the liver is, where the lungs are, and that. And it's very easy just to work off of a chart like this while you're working on somebody's body or your own body to clear out whatever that is and you know for people that might have some sore toes or underneath their feet is sore look at a reflexology chart check what that is because it might not be that you've got a stone or a nail in your shoe it might be that truly the organ that is in that area um, is out of balance all right and let's see I'm going to put this here. This is the ch chart. Well, it's not ch exactly the chart, but can you see this? This is all the vitamins and minerals that we need in our body. You know, there might be some more other than these, but this one basically is about 90 of them. And so we'll get that chart so that you can be able to download that also. And as far as when you're working on someone or yourself, you never want to work off of a picture that comes out of a book that is of a true human person. You, if you're working on someone and you have their photograph, yes, but you don't want to go into a book and pick a, a, out a picture of a real liver or that because you would be then working on their liver and not the person that you're looking for. So here's a basic chart that tells you where the different parts are in the body. And if you want to know which organ is out of balance the most, then you know use a chart on this type and just go ahead and hold your pendulum over it very loosely and ask that question. You know, what is the number one organ that is out of balance? or what is the organ that is creating uh, the pain in my knee or in my shoulder. And then when you find that out, that's when you go ahead and you ask to remove anything uh, that does not belong in there. You, know, you ask um, to remove anything that is non-beneficial and then yes to heal it. Leader, have you gotten any questions coming in? Actually, yes, Jenny, and I've been answering them on the sly. We've had some interesting conversations about um, negative green, and um, Margarita was kind enough to share a resource. So I've been forwarding that. If anybody else wants the information, I can make it public. But if, like I said, if anybody's got any questions on the side, I can handle those while Jenny's talking, and then we can save the rest of the questions for her to cover towards the end. Okay. So I'm just aside, was... from, aside from that, we're good, Jenny. Roll on. Okay. So I was just checking to make sure that if there was any questions that anyone hit that was coming along. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Good. And, you know, that's what I wondered if anybody was, you know, wanted to know about these charts, if they're all okay with how to use the pendulums on them. Jenny, would you like me to open up the lines for a minute and see if anybody wants to ask a question? Yeah, if there is a particular. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everyone, you're unmuted. If you've got a question. So these are different people's websites that have all this information from all over the world. So 
Okay, I'm also going to, if there's a lot of background noise, I'm going to mute you. So just so you know, but um, anybody else who's got a question, please feel free to speak up. Yes, uh, this is Ted. Uh, I developed this past summer a problem with smell where I smell chemicals, uh, cleaning chemicals that nobody else in the room smells. Um, I, and when you mentioned zinc, uh, I'll, I'll have to check that out. But uh, I've been to uh, an ear, nose, and throat doctor and I had a, a seen a neurologist and they can't come up with any answers. But you, you're smelling them. Yeah, I, uh, it, it's come and gone. I, there's been, recently I haven't smelled any abnormal smells, but uh, I definitely smell uh, chemical like like cleaning chemicals uh it's hard to describe but it, it's it's mm -hmm. not a normal smell and um like the doctor gave me smell exercises he said to you know get some uh, cinnamon and other uh, mace and, and cloves and things like that and smell them and try to get that sense of smell back but when i smell cinnamon i don't i don't smell it I, it doesn't smell like cinnamon okay um does it smell like pneumonia, uh, ammonia at all? No. No. Okay. No. Could be a lot of different things into that with it. But generally with the, the zinc is that you lose the smell of something. You know, that well, I've lost, I've lost you've my... You've got a fresh flower that is potent, but, you know, you can barely smell it. I have lost the sense of smell. Uh, like I said, I can't, you know, the smell exercise the doctor gave me, like smelling cinnamon, I, mm -hmm. I don't smell it. Uh, old Spice, um, you know, that, okay. that, that, that's so, a smell that I, I recognize, but it doesn't smell like Old Spice anymore. Well, zinc would be a good spot to try, you yeah. know. Jenny? You just go ahead and douse it. Yes. Does he, does, he, does he feel like he's smelling like blood? I mean, sometimes you, you feel like you're tasting or smelling blood, even though there's no blood. Nope. Because I have, I have someone who, down here in the Bahamas right now, and he's going through that, too. And we're trying to deal with that. And he, that's like an iron. So just curious. Well, no. Yeah. And so it's, yeah, could be a deficiency for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, just going through some of the list of the toxins and seeing if it's any of them, any of the heavy metals that are causing it. And then go through the vitamins to see what you need to add it. So what needs to come out, what needs to go in? I've got one question for that whole scenario. Um, I know that sometimes when spirits are trying to get a hold of you and talk to you, that sometimes they have certain smells, like if they're a heavy smoker, you'll smell smoke. If you have someone mm -hmm. who is very suspicious, you'll smell a rose. Um, it might be related to St. Teresa or something, but, but sometimes they'll come by with certain smells that mean something from your family or, or a friend or somebody, and sometimes you get a smell that you didn't even understand, but it's just there and you know it. Nobody yeah, that's, it. So I'm just yeah, curious. That's a, another one too that people find that that's how someone from the other side connects, but it's usually a smell that you would remember them from. No, I don't, there's no uh, connection with other people. Okay. Well, Lee was going to give you guys my number in that, so you can always give me a call and we can check to see what we might be able to come up with for you on that. And multi-21 minerals, I don't know how many people are familiar with those, but you basically do not get that in your food. You know, most of the plants would get it from the ground, from the soil, and it's pretty well depleted. So most people need to supplement that. And those are very, very important. Okay, Jenny, I'm gonna take a moment and mute everybody again, and then we'll, okay. we'll let you continue on. Go ahead, Jenny. Okay, thanks guys. So, you know that it, when you're going ahead and doing protocol, that's really important because when you ask that protocol, you know, am I clear to ask these questions? Am I hydrated to have these questions? Do I have enough 
amino acids in my body or enough protein in my body. That's where you're going to start finding out if you are in proper position to do your dousing. If you don't do protocol, you're not going to really know. And so are you getting correct answers? Or are you getting incorrect answers? So the protocol is very important to be able to catch if something's going on. You know, am I clear? Oh, no. So we need to go ahead and clear any negative entities, negative energies, negative spirits, demonic entities, demonic energies, demonic spirits, and that so that you're clear enough. And everybody has a different protocol to it. And just as long as you're actually covering what you need to, um, to remove and make sure that you are clear to ask. And questions, your questions have to be simple and exact. If you do not ask your question directly, you're gonna get an answer for what you've asked. You know, there's different degrees where, um, you know, people will ask, does someone like me? And, you know, you get the answer, no. And then the people go say, oh, well, they don't like me. I'm not going to be talking to them again. And actually, you need to go up a step. So, or you go below. So, did they like me? No. All right. So, do they love me? Yes. Because you're going to a higher level. Are they in love with me? Yes. So don't give up when you're on the lower end and you say, oh, no, they don't like me. You need to go up. You need to go down. And that way you'll find out if you're in correct position for your answer being right. Uh, you guys, we've gone over supplements and that. Past lives. We'd be surprised how much um, comes in with us from our past lives and from the soul and the work that the soul wants. You know, a lot of, in, in my opinion and in the work that I do, I find that, you know, soul is connected to the lungs and the lungs is the breath of life. So, you know, right now we're finding that in this virus, that that's basically where people are being taken out from. So how many of these people really um, are living a quality life, you know, that their soul finally is saying, no, it's time, I want to go, you know, let my soul um, go on to the next life, you know, so it can reincarnate and start all over again. So it's interesting to, you know, look at it in a different aspect that, I mean, many of these people that are going are choosing to go. Their souls are choosing to go because they want to come back to a better life. So we do, I think let's open this up because we kind of talked on the general. So let me have some questions to see if anybody wants me to explain something, you know, more involved into it, if you want me to talk on the emotional end. And, you know, so many people on the emotional end, they don't want to express it. You don't want to talk about it. You feel that what goes on or went on for you, um, you don't want other people to know. And in the basics in our life is, you know, we've come here to clear karma. We've come here to learn. And we're here to love. That's an important part of why we do come here. But on the emotional end, everybody has negative emotions. It only takes a second for them to trap. And so it's important that you release them out and not hold them in so that you don't end up with a major illness. You know, generally they say about children, you know, up until age four, some say up until age seven, that that's when cancer actually starts in, that it gets seeded in there. And the types of emotions, and you know, when you think of little children, 
and they're always being told, don't do that, you're bad, go sit in the corner, Go, don't be talking, different things like that over and over and over again. And a young child just wants to express their love and their fun. And they keep getting silenced or, you know, told they're not good enough or why can't you be like your brother or your sister? And those are very, very negative things that start um, blocking energy in their bodies, and it continues on. I've always felt that the school nurse should be able to release emotions. So when the kids come in and they're all out of balance and they're, um, you know, kind of being disruptive in that, it's like find out, you know, what's been going on in their household in the last week and get rid of those emotions so that they don't carry them on with them in life as they get older. And myisms, myisms generally start showing up, you know, in the age 50. And myism is from past life. It's something that comes in and is still in cell memory. And those can be cleared out. Everything can be cleared out. And we have the ability to do that with dowsing. I mean, dowsing has so many openings to it for us to be wise enough to know how to take care of things that are going on in our life. And, you know, we're actually able to go ahead and heal our bodies, which our bodies are meant to, to heal themselves. But how many people really know how to take, um, toxins out of their liver. You know, someone like a dowser will definitely be able to know how to do that, but generally other people have no idea. And so we are ahead of the game with it. Jenny, can you take a moment, please? There was a question on um, the actual procedure for releasing these things, like negative emotions. Negative emotions, sure. Okay, now in the process that I do, which is called the emotion code. And um, I'm a certified practitioner with Brad Nelson, and he has a book out called The Emotion Code. And I'm gonna just flash this chart, see if you guys can just kind of generally see this, okay? And in this chart, he has columns, and he has organs. In every chart or part here, there are two different organs with 10 different emotions, all right? And so that's the way he uses the process. Now, there's a lot of other people that do different ways. But the way that I do this is I will ask, what column is it in? And it'll tell me what column. And then I'll ask what the emotion is. And it'll tell me the emotion. And then at that point, I ask of the age. And literally, that we can go back. And very easily, the age will come up. I'll ask, you know, from is it age from birth to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and my pendulum will tell me that it's, you know, age five or whatever. And then generally your body tells you, your body doesn't want these things in there, and they're really helpful with getting rid of them and letting you know, hey, this is what's got to come out, you know? This is the number one, or um, I'll ask if somebody just, he has a, a problem with their foot. So then we're going to ask for all the negative emotions um, that have to do with the issue on the foot. Or else we're going to ask, you know, what is the number one that wants to come out in that? And it is so simple with releasing this. You know, it is up to the person. Oh, thank you very much. It is up to the person to let go. You know, we can walk you through it. But just as far as, you know, healing, you've got to be the one to let it release, whether it's emotional or physical. We just are facilitators to help you through it. But we do this with releasing over the governing meridian, which is the meridian that starts here and goes all the way back through and, and down to your tailbone. And generally, if it's in this lifetime, we do that three times. And, you know, when it's being released, so many people can feel it. They feel um, goosebumps, 
where they may just, you know, feel the energy come off of it or they feel lighter, like they've lost weight the next day. And um, the more that comes off, the better you feel. So the emotional end is very important. And I'm a, a firm believer that that's where you've got to go to it. And, you know, from the facts of when people would say years back that, you know, if you went in remission when you had some disease and it had left for two years to five years and that, most likely it wouldn't come back. Well, the general is, and my belief is that if you clear the emotional, the physical will clear on its own. But if you clear that physical and you don't clear the emotional, that's when that physical comes back months later or years later because you didn't get the root and the root is the emotional the negative emotions and that only take a second to trap you know somebody can look at you cross-eyed and you just feel low self-esteem and somebody else is just going to laugh at it because we're all different and so there's no rules that are the same for everyone. And you can do this on yourself also. On the emotion code way, or you're just going in and you're asking to, and use your pendulum because that's going to give you the best information. You know, what do I need to release? Do, do I have a lot of lack of control? You know, guilt. And, you know, when you think about death and how many times people have sadness, sorrow, guilt uh, about it, and those things come up. I find that when you do with pets, pets have these same emotions, you know, and so many of them, the, the pets, you know, feel like I never got to say goodbye to my mother and, um, you know, my siblings, different things like that, that it actually bothers them also. And it affects how they physically are. And so we go through and do the emotion code with them. We do the magnet over the governing meridian and can release that for the animals as well as for humans. Did you have another question in regards to it? Was I answering that for what you were asking about or? for the person who was asking about explaining the emotion codes? I haven't heard, yes, we have a yes, that was perfect, thank you. And then Kata has raised her hand that she's got a question. So I'm gonna unmute her. Go ahead, Kata. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering about um, specifically releasing emotions and perhaps past life stuff for mm -hmm. compulsive overeating and emotional eating. Absolutely. And so when I do this emotion code, um, it's this lifetime, it's time of conception, which is a gift Thank from you. your parents that will bring um, a time of con conception. It would be from father or mother. And a lot of times that they pass their negative emotions to us. So somebody who, you know, who has always felt that they were a failure and really didn't know what, but it's like, I've, I've always felt it, you know, and we go back and that comes up and it shows that it was a time of conception from a parent. And so we go ahead and release that. Also, when I do this, um, I get past lives coming through also. And I'll just about, kind of know that it is coming through as a past life, and we release it. And that very, very quick with, us, with compulsive overeating. Okay, when you're Emotional. into the, yeah, when you're into um, those things, definitely. And so that's where we ask first. You know, a lot of times I'll take my pendulum, and I'll ask Archangel Michael to tell me. You know, as far as show me the emotions, you know, the number one emotion in regards to compulsive eating. And then uh -huh. he will, you know, it'll, 
it'll show up on it because there's only a certain amount. And basically on this particular chart, chart, the person who devised it said that this covers all the emotions, you know, and maybe a certain one isn't on here, but it actually umbrellas under one of these. So when people say stress, I consider stress as being like the umbrella and these motions are the individual ones that are under the umbrella. That stress itself is not a negative emotion. It's all of the other ones that, you know, equal that. Stress, anxiety, um, nervousness. And then it works on an organ. So somebody who is having a lung problem, the negative emotions affected with that is crying, discouragement, rejection, sadness, sorrow, confusion, defensiveness, grief, self-abuse, stubbornness. And it's not always just one emotion. You might have 10, you might have 30 that you know, contribute to an imbalance. And so you keep going and going and going. The more work you do, the clearer you get. And heart, there's things that definitely, um, what I have found that with the heart, there's, you know, two parts to it. You know, we have the physical part and usually the heart works with the sexual organs on the physical part and on the emotional part also. So if somebody has a heart problem, I have to look at both of those to see what it is. You know, somebody who has um, sexual organ problems where they have prostate problems or that, I know that they also have a problem in their heart. And so that that's where I'd be looking at is releasing on both of those ends and asking the questions for that. Tata, did we answer your question? Yes, thank you. Great, thanks. So, Jenny, we have another question uh, along that line with releasing emotions. Do you have to know the root cause in order to release the emotion? No, oh, good question. Um, yes and no, because in this particular process, I have to ask, part of it is, um, after I find out, okay, it's age, you know, three, do we need to know anymore? And of course, if there's something that needs to really come out more, I'll get a yes, or I'll get the no, which means we can just go ahead and release it by doing the magnetic over um, the meridian. But there are times that, you know, the higher self, uh, the divine, whoever's, you know, working with me, and they will say, no, they need to know more. And so at that point when you might not be able to say, oh yeah, it just this just came into my head, see if it's that. And then I'll ask, get a yes or no on to it. Then I'll ask, if you don't really know, I'll ask, does it have to do with a parent? Does it have to do with a sibling? Does it have to do with school? Um, what season was this in? And so we try to narrow it in till you can kind of do some guesswork and I get a yes. And then we release it. But you'd be surprised how many times that the body automatically just comes right into your head about what it is. And it could be the very, very minimal, small thing uh, that you wouldn't really think bothered you. And then you might end up having quite a few on the same issue from the same time. You know, somebody, a schoolmate that you went to school with who was always doing annoying things to you or always had make you feel like they were better than you. And once again, that's how we perceive it and not everyone does. So for someone who might say, oh, that's so ridiculous, you know, that, you know, you were bothered by that. 
well, we all have different reasons why things bother us. And so there really is um, nothing that's too little or nothing that is horrid that you keep inside that will cause you harm rather than saying, okay, this happened to me or yeah, I, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, the more you talk about it, the more you bring it out. I have clients that I've worked with for two, three, four years. And when we do this, we laugh at the things that keep coming up. Oh, it's that old boyfriend again. Oh, that ex-husband, you know, that ex-wife. Um, you know, my dog. I really, I really never knew I loved that dog that much, you know, that it, you know, affected you on it. And so as we're going through and releasing them, it's um, become more of a happier moment and a fun moment getting rid of them than um, being dragged down by the negative energy with it. Jenny, we've got another question. Someone is asking you to back up for a moment and explain the 16 gold. Oh, okay. The frequency, of, the frequency of gold, okay? Now, the frequency of gold is the highest frequency out there. So you want to stay in that, you know, frequency of gold, white light um, is the place that you want to keep your energy level in. So it's called the frequency of gold. And the 16 equals frequency of gold. And it's um, an interesting little thing to try is if you go into a room and douse, is this room the frequency of gold? And if you get that answer, no, it isn't, then go ahead and put 16 dots. Now, the dots do not have to be the color gold, just 16 dots take 16 pencils and put them all together in a container or um, whatever you like on the idea of 16 things that are together. You don't want to put like one thing here, one there, there, and there. They literally, you know, need to be together. And when you do that and you put it in the room, then go back in and ask. Is this room the frequency of gold? And generally, you will always, at that point, it'll say yes. So it's good, you know, to go ahead and keep 16 of something in it. I would go and um, I buy these sheets of little dots that they have at the craft stores, and they're sticky, and that, and I cut out little sections of 16, so they're even less than, you know, an inch square and you can peel off the sticky back on it and just put them all over the place. You know, one in every room, put them on the outlets, but you just need to have one per room. And, you know, a room consists of where the doors, where it actually sections off. So if you had a really large room that was open, you'd only need, you know, one into it. And it's very good to put it on your electrical the outlets, the wall switches, and any other electrical. And on the back of your phone, if you don't have anything, you know, on there to um, neutralize the EMFs in that, you can go ahead and use the 16 dots. Very simple, but very powerful. Adi Tuwells taught me that. We'll give her credit for that. Any other questions? No, it looks like we've covered it. I've um, put in the spelling for Adi's name because that can be a little confusing to people. Mm -hmm. And also in the chat section, there's a link to send an email to Alicia if you wanted to know more about the uh, negative green. At this point, oh, we've got another 
question from Kata. So I'm going to unmute you, Kata, and go ahead. I wondered if you could also put out the information of the pendulum that she mentioned and where we might be able to get them. You can call me on them because I carry them. <laughs> okay, and we're going to get your phone number? Yes. Kata, because you're on the phone, you're not seeing it, but I did put it in the chat section. So if you'd like, you can email me up. Oh my goodness, that doesn't sound good. Um, you can email, email me afterwards at Lidra, which is L E E D like David R A at dowsers.org. Dowsers is plural. So okay. Lidra at dowsers.org, and I'll make sure to get you Ginny's cell phone number. All right, thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Oh, so there's another question. Would this, would the 16 dots help for radio reception? Yes. Because it, what it does is it clears you to the higher frequency, so it's clearing out on that also. Hello. Hello, I have a question. Yeah, I have. Uh, this is John calling. Uh, would the 16 dots help with uh, health problems? I'm a type 1 diabetic with kidney problems. You know, I'm not sure of that, John. First of all, by bringing the vibration of gold in, it's a high vibration. And so let me just ask that because I'm going to say that I think that it would affect it and it would affect it in a, a positive way. Mm -hmm. And I get a yes. Oh, wonderful. Okay, I'll, I'll get your, uh, well, thank you. I'll get your. So, uh, you know, you could even try. Um, with it by going ahead and, you know, taking a piece of paper, doing the 16 dots, and taping it onto the area of the kidney with the dots facing in to the skin. Oh, okay. Absolutely. I'm getting a yes with that, you know, I am getting a yes. Okay, great, thank you. I'll get to see you, how uh, that would work. Yes, I'll, I definitely will do that. And I thank you, and I will get your uh, phone number. Yeah, get my phone number, because, you know, um, anybody who has any questions in that, just call me, and I will call you back. It's a lot quicker if you're texting me rather than emailing in that. Jenny, if you'd like, we can just give that out to everyone now, if you'd like to jot it down. <clears throat> so if everybody's got something to write on and to write with, uh, Jenny's, Jenny's cell phone number is area code 315-450-6990. Again, 315-450-6990. Six nine nine zero. Hi, uh, Jeannie, hi, this is Margarita, and I have a quick question. You just mentioned that you also sell pendulums. Do you have a website or or how people go about buying your pendulums? No, I don't have a website on it, but if you go on to um, intuitivedowsing.com, which is Alicia's oh, yeah. site, Got it. I, carry, yes. I carry all of hers. You know, her pendulums are wonderful. Yeah, I, I actually own 
Fronalicia, the IC16, that's what I use. Right. Mm -hmm. That's my oh, okay. one of my favorites. Okay, you know, the, thank you. The IC16 and the Atlantis and the uh, one that they give off the frequency of gold and white light, different ones on that. And those are the most high powered of them. I think the other one's the neutral. But I have to really say that having a witness pendulum where you can go ahead and put whatever you need inside it is very important. You know, because even if you have to take a prescription drug, you can go ahead and put that into the witness and that would be going into the body, but you wouldn't be taking it physically. Couldn't you also just hold it in your hand while you have the pendulum in your hand? Um, you can muscle test with it. I mean, you can definitely, you know, First of all, that thought is the most powerful part of it. So yes, you know, you can go ahead and ask for that, for your body to be accepting it. You can muscle test it in, um, you know, even on sometimes too, that if you didn't have a witness in that, you can, I've, you know, done it where you've taped it onto it. So then you're going ahead and spinning it over. And always remember to keep your strings tucked in because that's where energy comes out. So yeah, being creative, as long as um, you, your intent is there. The intent is, is very powerful. And something like ISIS 16 works for everything. And most of your pendulums will work for everything, but some have a little bit more power um, than others. But it's a great ability that we have. Okay, so Jenny, we are at pretty much a quarter past the hour. And if there's anyone else who's got questions, we'd love to get those and then um, let you get wrapped up. Anybody else have anything else that they'd like to contribute? Questions, anything that's come to mind, you can unmute yourself or raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. All right, I thought there was an error. I have a question about the gold frequency. If you were to do the 16 dots, like if you wore a belt or your wallet put 16 dots on there, would that raise the frequency of carrying it every day? And my second question was, does it make a difference if you were yellow gold or white gold? As far as yellow gold or white gold for just your jewelry frequency, well, yeah, it's gold. Or like how many carats should the gold be for the frequency to have 16? Well, to do that, you don't need to have gold, all right? It's okay. the frequency itself is gold, and gold is the highest frequency. Correct. The, the fact of 16 of something equals the frequency of gold, and that does not have to be anything gold. Actually, you don't have to be using real gold or gold. You can use a pencil to make 16 dots for a pen. You know, always, of course, the divine prefers something natural, so that would be pencil over ink and that, but you could still use it. So, yeah, so anything you can do, you can cut hey, But if you like to wear, if you like to wear gold, what would you recommend? White gold for a higher frequency or yellow gold? No, higher frequency would be like 18 karat gold, 14 karat gold. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's right in everybody's budget. <laughs> All right, everybody be safe and thank you very much for coming on this evening. Thank you.
So there's another about, question, um, oh, just sure. before we move on to the next one, Ginny, that can, do all of the 16 dots have to be the same color and size? And my understanding is that they should all match. Is that correct? I think that, um, you know, they, they, I don't think they have to be all the same color, but say, you know, you've got colored paper and you're going to take a hole puncher and you're going to pull out 16 dots. That as long as they are together, you know, or just being able to put 16 of those little holes on a piece of paper that will create the frequency of gold. How about if you put them on your shelf, like a little? Yes, right there, you've got it. Now, you does that, you know, right there. Ask if it's, just go with pendulum over it. Is this the frequency of gold? Am I the frequency of gold? Mm -hmm. Ask a couple different questions. You want to cover your questions. Okay. This is Sue. What about making a necklace with 16 beads? Absolutely. That would be the frequency of gold. Necklace, bracelet. Mm -hmm. And you can always verify that by asking. You know, is this the frequency of gold? Is this necklace a frequency of gold? You know, put it in a room. Ask if the room's now a frequency of gold because of the necklace that's in there. because you can check. Mm -hmm. You know, you can make it in a circle. You can make it in a square. So what did you get for your answers? I got a yes. Okay. So ask if, you're, if that room now is the frequency of gold. I get a yes. Mm -hmm. Because you are in it with those frequencies. And it's something as simple as that. You know, just put them on a little piece of paper, 16 dots, put them in every room. And that's going to bring What about a spring with six, 16 knots in it? Yeah. Yeah, that probably would work. But I'm not positive because this, that also, by tying a knot, cuts energy. So best exactly. thing to do is yeah. make it and then go ahead and douse it. Okay. Yeah. You know, and to put these in your car, um, as I said, when I would use those little beads that were all on a same piece of paper in that, I would put it, you know, where I put the gas in the car in mm -hmm. that. So for better mileage. So wherever you think. So, Jenny, and, and so I, part of the concept would be if you were decide to wear something with the 16 on it, mm -hmm. you'd be always walking in the light of the, the higher frequency right. of cold mm -hmm. and, and the white light. And then if you want to put it in each room, you can put it in each room to intensify whatever's in the room. But otherwise, you're always walking around with that in your whole being. And exactly. Yeah. I have a necklace that does a pendant that has 16 stones in it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that, that if you had that on, wherever you walked into, that would become 16. Um, of that would bring it into the frequency of gold. Yes. I think I'm going to start it's making it. Very, very simple. It's, it's I a fun be, one. I'm going to make those for the store. Thank you. Yes, great idea. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can take, you know, different stones, crystals, put them on, you know, just in a dish on your table and that, but if there's 16 of them in the bowl, they don't have to be the same size. That works, you know, crystals and that, sure. Any other questions? Yeah, I, hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. I have another question about the 16 frequency. What if you have 20 stones? Would that still have the 16 frequency or has to be exactly 16? 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank uh, you. And it's, that's a very good one for you to just go ahead and try because you're no longer the frequency of, of gold. 
So All right, so like I have to stack 16. You take okay. your other pendulums, you know, if you take other ISIS that doesn't have the 16 and you ask, you know, is that the frequency of gold? You'll get a no on it. It, it has to be 16. Okay, good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. What happens mm -hmm. if, I have a question. What happens if there's uh, two sets of 16 um, in a room? You have one, uh, 16 beads in a bowl on a bookcase, mm -hmm. and 16 beads in a bowl on a table. I, you know, from because I do have that more than one in there, and it usually still comes up that it's the frequency of gold. Oh, okay. Because I might have it on a light switch or a plug. Yeah. Okay. So it will still come up that. Thanks. You're welcome. Six eight four five. Do you have a question? Um, I asked. I asked it, and it was answered. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, Jenny. Have you? You feel like we've? Okay. Um, would you like to douse to see if this? Uh, if this talk is complete. All right. And I'd like to thank everybody, and for those of you who can, join us um, online for the convention this year. It's a different way of doing it, but it's a great way to learn information. And, you know, um, I will have a lot more charts in my talk, and we'll go into more nutrition and other things that are helpful for everybody. So I hope to see everybody um, making use of the convention and stay healthy and pay attention to the percentages of your nutrients to keep you healthy and happy. And I would just like to thank everyone who joined us on the webinar. I mean, the folks who joined us by calling in, that's fantastic. Thank you for joining us. We had a wonderful group. Um, the people who joined us on the webinar, hopefully you got a lot more out of it with the, the chat and the resources and all of that. So we're looking to give people this opportunity to get as much out of these as possible. So we'll be doing more of these webinars to really give people some good resources that they can work with. And uh, we'll, we'll look forward to your feedback from these things. And we'll look forward to seeing you again. So thank you for joining us. Again, if you've got any questions, you're welcome to email me, Lidra, L-E-E-D-R-A, at dowsersplural.org. And other than that, everyone have a wonderful evening. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. I'm going to open thank up you the line. Good night. Say good night. Because the Sai Baba devotees were there. I fell in love with San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Good night, everybody. Hello. Hello. Could I ask what Jenny's last name is, please? I came in late. It's Serio. C-E-R-I-O. C-E-R-I-O. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Thank you, Jenny. I, I just, I came in late on the phone call, so uh, I'm on phone, so I can't see it. It's like... <laughs> Okay. Thank and, you. Okay. And I have a question. How just, do you get on Zoom? Just so you know, it's Ginny J I N I. To get on Zoom, you have to download it first. You download the Zoom app. All right. So what I have to do then is sign up with Google or whatever, and then download. So I have it for next week. Do you have an iPhone or a smartphone? I have an iPhone and I have, I just got a computer. And as I'm well as it's computer. On, on, compute, on computer too. Right. All right. So, so what am I looking for? I just looked it up while we were on the conference tonight and I couldn't figure out which one am I signing up for. You will receive an invitation. There's an invitation and there'll be a link for each specific uh, topic of, of the call. So when we do the convention, just so you know, each one will have its own link directly. 
that right. we... Okay, but I don't understand when I'm signing up for Zoom. How do I get you? Because tonight I was going to do the Zoom, and I said you had to do the Google. I said the log in. Is that how it works? So and then, I get, then I put the code in. Is that how it goes? Okay, I'm going to, Ginny, I'm going to end the recording so that you can feel these last few questions. And, um, okay. and then we'll see what we can do to help people. So thanks, everyone. Thank you. Is this, is this call being archived?